वेलकम वेलकम एवरीवन थैंक यू गाइस सो आई डायरेक्टली स्टार्ट द कन्वर्जेशन आई टेल यू वी बीन ऑन फ्यू पैनल्स टुगेदर सुंदर व्हाट वी ट्राई टू ऑलवेज इज वी ट्राई टू हैव अ कन्वर्जेशन एंड नॉट इंट्रोगेशन सो टू से यू नो इट्स एंडली व्हेन वी स्पीक इट्स लाइक few friends talking and we would want of course rohan is a good friend as well uh, we've done like we've known each other for a while so the idea is uh, the creator economy right now when pre covid it was about a 50 million creators or people of influence in india right which now is soon to touch about 100 million so there are 100 million odd people of influence slash creators in india right of course there are so many platforms let's begin the conversation maybe you know we could start with say gagan go all the way up to sundar which has been your favorite creator campaign you've done in any of the brands you've worked on or any creator campaign you've seen so i think uh, it's not a campaign but currently what we are doing uh, at kardeco is we are purely focusing on instagram right uh, we were a serious brand but now if you see the channel or the instagram uh, channels it's purely quirky uh, brands right so the reels we released uh, two months back our average view on a reel is 3 to 4 lakh uh, video plays on the reel this reel got 30 million video plays now and the reel is about one of a host is driving an automatic car but he is changing the gear with a water bottle and he is crying because he is missing the manual transmission like he loves cars but it's all is automatic right now and that's and that's lata mangeshkar song is playing in the background so 30 million views wow. right so this is how i think it's, it's no more a paid thing but just all quirky content that's working for us right now interesting very interesting rohan uh, difficult to choose amongst all your children all your campaigns that you're running but uh, something that's really close to our hearts right now is this campaign we are doing for hdfc bank called we for vigilante uh it's also actually we've created an influencer while using influencers in the campaign itself uh we for vigilante is actually run by lola kutti uh, who you'll know from the past and uh, it's a unique take on how do you uh manage this problem of banking frauds and finance frauds that are happening and the content goes across whatsapp instagram josh and a lot of other platforms and uh, we invite celebrities into that content and it's a beautiful piece of campaign because it's a long term campaign it's not something that we've done which is a flash in the pan it's something that we've invested for over a year and continue to invest and has also become synonymous with the brand uh, and probably one of the most clutter breaking campaigns in that space interesting interesting of course that campaign has been winning awards across the globe congratulations for that as well thank you shreya um so of course um, influencers are our bread and butter but one of the things that we did that was very different from working with typical content creators or something we did um, march of last year um and the insight was um well today everybody is a content creator or wants to be a content creator but maybe doesn't have the means to do it right because everybody wants well shot content for all of their social media platforms but they don't necessarily have access to professional cameras or setup or even professional photographers right so um for women's day last year we turned a huge number of our stores across the country into a uh, photo shoot setups right so we we had a professional photographer we had a backdrop created and you could come in and wear our clothes you didn't have to buy them um and you could pose um for pictures which you would get we basically used a bit of back end tech integration and an api link to puma.com um so you would automatically get the email um or in your inbox with your images but you would also immediately feature on puma.com right and not just on a home page that we created or a landing page that we created but also on the various product pages right so if you're wearing a particular product we were actually scanning that product and you would turn up on that product's page um right so we had um 1200 women actually walk into our stores um and model our products for us and then actually turn up on the product display pages on puma.com right and um of course we saw massive reach click through traffic but also massive massive jump in sales i mean we were sold out beginning of the season so yeah. i think very interesting the affinity which the brand would have created especially amongst the first two circles of these 1200 women would be crazy very interesting sujatha how about you 
So my category is a little different, financial services, and it's something people are very, very careful and want to be safe about. And as we know, during the pandemic and lockdown, people were forced to go from cash to cashless. There were a lot of people who didn't know how, didn't know if the transactions would be safe, didn't know what to do, especially the older population. So what we did was we ran an influencer campaign where we got people who were experts in certain areas. Like we got technical guruji to come and teach people how do you actually make an online transaction? How do you make sure you're, you're safe? How do you pay contactless and how do you make sure you're safe? So what, while we've done a lot, I think that was very, very close to my heart because we had a lot of people write back saying, thank you. You know, you've saved us from, we, uh, we talked about the dangers of phishing. We talked about the dangers of all this online frauds. People actually wrote back to us saying, thank you. You saved us from what could have been potentially a horrible situation. Also, we had a lot of people who were living alone and said they, they didn't know what to do, so they didn't buy anything for two weeks, and they were just managing with what they had in the house. And because of these educational videos and all the influencers posting, they could comfortably make the move from cash to cashless. And we continue that till today. So what we do is meet new people coming in, Gen Z, everyone's coming into cashless. So that's something that is our standard, and it's something I think that for me is a big thing that we are helping people do, so close to my heart. Very interesting. Sundar, you work with creators around the clock. So I think I should uh, thank Rowan for that campaign. Rowan, that one was really interesting, the SJC campaign. But the one that is very close to our heart is that uh, we worked with Joss Alukas in, uh, in the Kerala market. And uh, one of the reasons that the campaign did very well for us is because uh, traditionally Joss Alukas always had a Russian women on their hoardings across Kerala and they believed that all Malayalis look like Russians. That's never the truth, you know. I mean, South India is made into four states and we all look different. We're not same Andukundu people. So, so our, our aim was to ensure to Joss Alukas that we actually show them the real face of Ernakulam, Kerala and stuff and all, where we actually got a, a, a series of uh, women who actually used that uh, a wedding trend called uh, Mangalyam Tantuna Mena. Is that when you get married, you get that slok by the priest. So we made a, a music piece out of it, and we just ran a transition of women just coming into the into the frame and getting into women jewelry. For the first time, uh, Jaws Alukas picked up the winner and made them the face of the campaign. And today, Omna Kuti is the face of Jaws Alukas across Kerala. I think that's a big win for us. You know? Nice, nice. Wow. So you actually put a creator on a hoarding. And made him the brand ambassador of a particular brand. Wow. wow. And this is across the whole region? Across Kerala. Wow. wow. Very interesting. Very interesting. So I think, I think very interesting thoughts and what, what I see is um, uh, a good mix where someone is uh, utilizing their own content to utilizing a long-term influencer to doing things with their customers. I think it's, it's a good mix. Let me jump to the next point. We all know that the customers, the consumers have become very, very smart. Right? And with, say, you know, the number which I just mentioned about a hundred million soon to touch in terms of people of influence, consumers want authenticity. How do you figure and what, are there some tricks of the trade which you guys have been using or any examples you can cite where you cho chose an influencer who was authentic to a brand? I would actually like to start with one example. Uh, we used to work with this fantasy app uh, called Dream11. And uh, for the brand, I think about two and two, I, three IPLs back, um, uh, I think this was peak of COVID. Uh, we chose an influencer by the name Cabby Lame. Cabby Lame happens to be world's biggest influencer, has about 200 million odd followers across the world. The best thing about him is he doesn't speak a word, right? I'm sure all of you would have seen Cabby Lame's content, right? He creates a lot of funny content on his page. Now, what we realize is, so that year, Dream 11's campaign was Dimag Lagana Hai to Dream 11 Pe Laga. Right? So that was the campaign that time. Of course, if you would know Game of Skill versus Game of Luck, uh, those were the days. Uh, right? We realized every single video of Cabby Lame would potentially become a Dream 11 ad because that's what Cabby Lame used to do. Right? Uh, pick up any, think of any video which you would have done. It's technically the tagline of that video could be Dimag Lagana Hai to Dream 11 Pe Laga. Right? We realized that that's the most authentic influencer collaboration one can have, uh, especially the, the campaigns which I had seen, uh, which we'd done at White Rivers, 
रियलाइज कि यार ये जो मैच है वो किलर मैच है वी यू नॉट गेट अ सिमिलर मैच फॉर ड्रीम इलेवन एंड दैट्स वाई वी यूटिलाइज हिम एंड दैट वीडियो लिटरली वेंट वायरल इट इट लाइक एवरीवेयर ऑन फॉर द नेक्स्ट फ्यू डेज ऑन लिंकड इन और वेर एवर यूड सी ऑन द एन एम मीडिया यूड सी अबाउट यू नो यूड सी न्यूज अबाउट द कैंपेन राइट सो वी रियलाइज ऑथेंटिसिटी ट्रेवल्स मच मोर देन ग्रेट कॉन्टेंट वट वट इज योर टेक एनी ऑफ यू कैन पिक दिस अप you could cite any of your examples of authenticity in influencer campaigns yeah so uh, we are in a very unique position right kahar dekho is a very niche vertical we can't be massy we can't go to everywhere or any category we have to remain somewhere very close to auto and the reason is that uh, the total car sales in india in a month is 3 and a half lakh i get 50 million traffic on my site per month so i don't know right where my all my customers are already on my side now who do i target outside right it's difficult to figure out but any which way is coming to a point uh, uh, one of the most important thing in auto is the passion if you're not it's a passion topic like right? hands mobile or auto is a passion topic so we were creating a content in dubai uh, with one of the partners in handset uh, we were shooting there and it was all about fast cars and how a handset work along the fast cars right now we were looking for an influencer now which influencer should we pick which category it was thing so eventually we picked uh, technical guru ji for few reasons one <laughs> yeah he is based out of dubai second he is passionate about fast cars and in that video it's a series of four videos uh, which is live on power drift uh, and discovery plus he uses his own cars oh, nice. right and he drove them in the video the, the as an influencer he had a like like a smaller role right but in this video he actually played a much bigger role and the payment was also not that high right it was because it was a topic that he was passionate about and the video went so popular the series because the cars were amazing and everybody in that video was passionate about cars there was no misfit at all uh, whether it's influencer or our own host or even the brand ceo everybody was on the same page in terms of passion Yeah. Very nice. so technical guru ji seems to be very popular so because we use him i think the point you made is authenticity so gone are the days where you just get a big name and you get them to speak today they speak on one brand tomorrow than the other what we've seen is you have to look at the segment so for us payments there is payments for fun and leisure like if you're traveling okay and then there's payments for more serious things so i talked about technical guru ji we use him for the serious part but a big part of people using digital payments is when they travel so what we do is then we get experts in that so we got bruce passports we got different people who are traveling got them to actually travel to a certain place showed how the whole journey could be you know cashless digital without any issues then when we come to uh, when we come to gen z we realize that they they have passion points again so whether it's music whether it's fashion and we take micro influencers i think the bigger thing is to look at people who have about 30000 followers but they have very lo- loyal followers and we get them to talk a point there so that's what we do which is segment by segment and take the micro influencer in that segment and have them talk very interesting i think to add to a point one of the most uh, base point about josh is that it's very bharat in nature the the whole platform is built on real people the the kols of the world hardly exist today because the ugc is able to travel from being a normal creator to become a, a micro or a macro so one of the things that we did is that when the patan movie came out um yashraj wanted a, a real review of what they felt the movie was because we normally see the reviews by our fellow journalist who give you a very safe review of what the thing should be so we actually rolled out a thing called as a real review it actually tells people across bharat to talk whatever they feel about the campaign and in the reward of that we uh, ensured that we will fill up the screens in 10 screens across india uh, so the real review actually spoke about how patan was good but how sharukh had done better how the song was about this that but in the end we were able to uh, fill in 20000 tickets from bharat in various pockets of india the influencer just called out and said come watch the movie i'll give you a, a discount code and people watch the movie interesting interesting i i yeah. just had one more question and then you can answer because i'm sure you would have some aspects of that so while of course authenticity is what we are talking about right that 
is followed by success, right? If you could possibly, and maybe I also see Shreya with the mic, if, and we've had conversation about success matrix for some of our conversations in past. How do you marry authenticity slash the content which you put up with the success matrix? And what are the success matrix with which you choose or with, you know, you mentioned 30 million views to a reel. Is that success? Maybe or maybe not. How do you measure success to any of your influencer campaigns? If you could merge both answers. Sure. Uh, let me try and cover both in one. I think authenticity is at the core of the kind of campaigns which really gain traction these days. And gone are the days where we are chasing vanity metrics of reach and sometimes engagement uh, and even followership while we are choosing an influencer or a creator as the term has evolved uh, when picking someone for the campaign. So a very interesting example for this is something that we are doing for Lenovo with a yoga book. So the yoga book is targeted at creators, at people who are, you know, artistic in nature. So we put together a, a series of content, uh, one which featured a belly dancer creating art along with a visualizer. Uh, so the campaign is called Brave New Art. And the second one has got a rapper working along with the AI artist to create a very interesting piece of content. Uh, we've not only utilized their own platforms, but these now feature as a series on Hotstar also. Uh, because we see our audience, you know, does come to that platform and now we're going to have a longer set of uh, episodes coming up from that. The point I'm making out here is that we made the entire content using the yoga book. So the yoga book was integral to the shooting, the editing of the content and it was integrated into every aspect of it rather than just an influencer push saying, hey, this is good to use for my work. Um, so the brand is at the very core of the idea itself and while the vanity metrics might not be the biggest or the 30 million kind of zone, it's the brand tracks which really, you know, start moving for these things like this. So to answer the question on what kind of metrics do we look, uh, well the absolute m best metric would be of course sales. But while that's not possible, you have other metrics which are still deeper in nature like website visits, like leads or else brand tracks. And these are becoming much better metrics to gauge work on because clients, brands are also taking a much longer term approach onto influencer marketing. It's no more a flash in the pan. And therefore a brand track can showcase, you know, the kind of effect it's having uh, on that brand. So those are the ones we use and in the absence of those, you have the older ones that still exist. Of course. Of course. Interesting. Shreya? Um, no, I think it's undeniable everybody's spoken about authenticity, right? So I thought maybe I'll um, speak a bit about how you can do some of this, right? Um, and maybe contextualize it a bit with what we do. Um, for every brand, this process of finding the right influencer is very different, right? Because you exist in different industries, your objectives are different, the audience that you talk to is different, your price points are different, your product is different, right? But um, I think it's important to find that intersection of what your product is with what the influencer talks about and who their audience is, right? So um, very simple, basic ways that we do this, for example, is when we're evaluating an influencer, very, very hygiene thing we check is do they wear athleisure and sneakers, right? It doesn't matter what your metrics say, it doesn't matter what your reach or your followers are. If you don't wear athleisure every day, there's no point partnering with me because that's not authentic content, right? I remember that was the first, yeah. first few minutes of our conversation yeah. last time. You were exactly. like, do they wear yeah. our products? Exactly. So these are very, and you don't need an intense social media analytics app to tell you that, right? It's very intuitive. Um, even the kind of content that they create, right? Now, again, this differs a lot from brand to brand, but we have this term in Puma that we say, are they Pumaized, right? Do they make the right kind of content that resonates with what we as a brand stand for? If it's not cool, edgy, new age, maybe they're not the right vibe. It doesn't matter if they have, again, great metrics, their audience loves them. If they create content for us, it just won't gel with what we stand for, right? So um, you have your hygiene metrics and you have too many tools today uh, that exist, right, that can tell you everything from 
from what the active audience is to what is their gender split to um, which uh, you know countries and cities they have following from what is the age group that they have following from and all of them are great right it really helps you narrow down which audience you're talking to right but again very intuitive things right if I'm looking at a female content creator and 85% of her audience is male how will I sell my clothes to a female audience through her right so it doesn't matter if her metrics are great she's probably not the right fit for me right so there are a lot of ways as a brand that you can select the creator for you that makes sense and is authentic and a lot of it is very first principle right um, you don't need uh, detailed social media metrics to figure some of this out I think the second piece that sometimes maybe brands forget that it's very important when activating that partnership is how you activate that partnership right um, a very important thing to keep in mind is that um, you know if you've partnered with an influencer and for you it's very important to get ROI so there's this tendency to say have they mentioned my brand three times have they tagged them everywhere are they going overboard is my logo visible if that kind of content is not something that they create regularly and their audiences don't engage with the results on that content will be absolutely trash, right? So um, it's important to step back as a brand manager and say, yes, this is what I want, but if I'm talking to the, their audience through them, I have to ask what does their audience want to hear, right? Um, and again, a very basic and simple thing, right? When we work with running influencers, for example, um, a lot of them have a lot of clout in their community, but they're not necessarily f content creators by profession right so telling them make a reel about my shoe is not going to work because that they don't do that but what they do is very genuine reviews about the technicalities of the product so if you tell them why don't you just simply do that right just review this product that I'm giving you exactly the way you do all of your content it works great because that's why their community follows them right so I think some of these very simple first principle tricks help a lot um, I think one of the things that we do as a practice is of course we work with creators and influencers of all types across the board. Um, but given that this tends to be an extremely crowded space, um, sometimes you lose authenticity because the creators working with you and 20 other brands in your space. Um, right? So what we've really started to do now is if we feel a creator is really working for us, this partnership is authentic, people are responding to the content they're creating for us, we sign longer term exclusive deals with them. Right? Because then you build recall across a period of time um, rather than one off because then that's one content piece in a sea of content that a consumer will just scroll through to the day and they'll see it and they'll forget it instantly versus if there's constant recall for your brand on an influencer or content creators page the likelihood that they will register longer term is higher um, right so I think um, these are some of the very first principle things that we do you can break it down way more scientifically but it's just very logical on how you approach a particular campaign right and um, talking about the success piece again I think look it's very different for different brands right um, it's also very industry specific so beauty industry for example sees great results for bottom of the funnel right because their price points and their basket size is just that small for a brand like ours if we were to go that route no influencer campaign would ever be successful right because our shoes start at 7k and 8k right you can't be looking at massive bottom of the funnel um, but depending on are you looking at a product campaign are you looking at a brand campaign like what is it that you're trying to solve for um, you you create your objective beforehand right and it can be anything it can be something as basic as um, did I see an uplift in Google search trends for a particular product after I seeded 100 influencers with that product right it can be as unrelated as that um, it depends on what your objective is it's important to realize that um, not always can sales be an objective sometimes it can be but if you only go with that you'll never face success you have to have a longer term perspective and you have to remember that um, as a consumer if I'm interacting with a product the first time it's not like I will purchase the first time right there's a process to the funnel you first engage you see it a couple more times then maybe at some point you want to purchase right and attribution becomes a bit difficult Got then it. because I saw the influencer content now but I went to the store maybe two weeks later and bought the product right so if you go by direct UTM link attribution for example you will struggle because there will be no direct linkage so you have to step back and figure what is it really that my objective is is it sales is it brand awareness is it whatever and what are the metrics that I can use in the longer term probably to attribute to something like this because it's a slightly murky area yeah. interesting no I think I think I, I love 
the way you broke down the answer. Let me, since the time is ticking, let me quickly ask a platform. We understood an agency side, we understood a brand side. Uh, how, how does your platform measure success? So I think it depends on, like, like she said, from brands to brands. Uh, but from a, from a perspective of a UGC brand, a UGC platform, we normally see that uh, the real metrics actually we follow is, like you said, the views. You know, it actually stands true because um, the one thing that we tell our brands is that the moment you give us the brief, we give the brief to the uh, guide directly, to the creator. So the creator community actually knows what he's capable of building because he knows his art form and he will be able to create that form for his community. The moment we try and put any creative logic behind it and say that change this script, change this structure, that guy will not connect to that particular audience. And hence, uh, the, the more open we keep the brief and the more he's able to talk to the community in his art form. Like example, a, a stunt guy is able to communicate better logic in stunt content than fashion content. So we, we don't mix stunt and fashion most of the time. And like I said, the matrix is important. That million views in the end of the day actually attributes for what we do. Interesting. Since the time's up, let me just ask a super quick, maybe a one-liner to each one of you and you know, that's how we can wrap the session. Uh, what, what do you think is the future of creator economy? Creator economy 10 years back as a term did not exist, right? It started as a hobby, it started as a passion, right? Especially on digital, it didn't exist. Of course, it existed outside of digital. What do you think, what next? With Once India reaches 100 million creators, yeah. how do you think it's going to explode? So I think next five year is, this is a space to be in. Uh, I feel the AI will play a big role because as of now it's all cluttered. As individuals, a brand is too difficult to go through. Like she mentioned that some are intuitive but not everything is intuitive, right? So AI will play a big role. And I also see that uh, this will become a, they'll all become businessmen. Creators will become businesses. They'll have their own offices, own teams. Correct. So art will meet commerce. It's already there, but they'll be more structured in their commerce. Very interesting. Rohan, quick thoughts? Yeah, yeah, no question. It's going to be a fabulous future for the creator economy. Everyone's a creator now, right? It's not 100 million, it's a billion uh, because all of us are creating content all the time. Um, I think there'll be a deeper focus on to um, right now still creators, while they are judged on the brand metrics, they're not paid basis brand metrics. They're paid basis deliverables in most cases. I think that change will happen where there will be some linkage to an outcome for a brand, an outcome for a business, which will become a part of their, uh, you know, their remuneration. So I think that's a big change that will happen. It's already started happening in the West and we start seeing that out here also. Yeah, it will, it, again, it marries with the whole point of art meets commerce, right? When, if they're linked to the profit which the brand makes, I think the scale could be enormous. Shreya, quick thoughts? Well, I'm just rethinking my career choice, <laughs> uh, knowing what we pay creators these days. Um, no, but uh, yeah, I think it's, you can't deny that it's, it's going to be uh, uh, like probably the foremost career choice for any young person today. Um, like any industry, it will go through a cycle of learning and flux. Uh, things that are unstructured now will get structured. Um, there will be a certain, um, you know, standardization that will come in sometimes uh, within industry if, um, you know, you, at some point you feel like you're overpaying or, or it's, it's not uh, at par with what you're getting out of it, that industry faces a certain flux and then settles down. So all of that will happen. Uh, but this industry is here to stay, right? I mean, young people spend, I think, more time in the virtual world than they do in the real world. So you can't deny that this is probably the foremost career choice for most young people. Very interesting today. perspective. Sujata? Three quick points. As everyone said, this is going to become a full-fledged profession for most people. Second, one size doesn't fit all. So I don't think we should look at one influencer for a campaign all over. And that's where the necessity of vernacular comes in because huge popular part of the population is vernacular, so what works in one will not work in all. So different uh, for different geographies. And the final thing is um, what Shreya alluded to, which is don't try and push your brand into brand conversations. You want it to be genuine. Take the influencer for what they are strong with and merge your brand into that. Very interesting. And I, I like how you structured three quick points and went ahead with it. Thank you. Sandar? I think for me, the, I think I'll, I'll live a day to see the dream where, you know, like, 
क्रिएटर होना चाहिए लाइक ना हाउ से माय सन इज एन एमबीए डॉक्टर सीए आई एम होपिंग दैट सम पेरेंट्स विल वन डे वेक अप एंड सी दैट हैव बीन माय सन डॉटर इज अ क्रिएटर वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग देयर वाज अ स्टडी ऑन दिस दैट एन एजेंसी हैड डन अ कपल ऑफ इयर्स बैक वेयर द मोस्ट कॉमन फ्रेज दैट दे हर्ड वाज माय नेबर्स डॉटर इज एन इन्फ्लुएंसर वाओ वाओ इंटरेस्टिंग सो अगेन लॉन्ग स्टोरी शॉर्ट क्रिएटर इकोनॉमी इज हियर टू स्टे क्रिएटर इकोनॉमी इज हियर टू एक्सप्लोर अ लॉट मोर and it is going to become a lot more pure by authenticity and the creators are going to make a lot of money right so thank you very much thank you